Hello everyone and welcome back to round 19 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament and uh, as you uh, might have gotten the, the impression uh, this is a very long tournament 24 players battling it out everyone against everyone so 23 games will be played uh, and uh, you know for those of you who are uh, perhaps spending the Saturday night at home you are in for quite a treat uh, as here in round 19 uh, Bobby Fischer faces none other than Mark Taimanov. Now I don't think Mark Taimanov needs any introduction we've already had uh, a lot of videos about him and if you know you have uh, uh, studied some chess history or uh, you know it, even if you've studied just a little you know one book uh, there there is no way that you have not heard of uh, Mark Ta uh, Taimanov uh, one of the strongest Soviet grandmasters uh, at that time uh, probably a member of the top 10 elite uh, okay maybe not the top 10 but definitely top 20 elite uh, of the world elite uh, chess grandmasters and uh, this is what uh, Bobby came here to do he came uh, to, to win the interzonal to win the candidates to win the world chess championship and to do that he has to uh, beat the Russians or the Soviets so that being said we do have a nice uh, photo challenge I prepared uh, for this game so there you have it who are the two gentlemen in this photo uh, shouldn't be a difficult one but uh, next one will be difficult so here here's an easy one so there we have it, and uh, uh, we don't have a photo of this matchup, uh, Fischer versus Taimanov uh, from the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal, uh, but of course we do have one from their 1971 uh, candidates match uh, in Vancouver. Uh, it's uh, actually uh, an excellent photo, so you know, let's let's just enjoy it and uh, prepare for this game. So there we have it. Uh, Fischer has the white pieces, and he opens with e4. Uh, we have c5, Tamanov goes for the Sicilian, knight to f3 and knight to c6. d4, c captures on d4, knight captures on d4 and here Tamanov plays e6, uh, which is the Tamanov variation of the Sicilian. Uh, knight to b5, we have d6 and here c4 is played. It's, uh, it's pretty much a common thing in the Sicilian if... Uh, uh, black stalls with the development of this knight and your e4 pawn is not attacked uh, if you can you know if you have the opportunity you know feel free to push the c4 pawn before developing your knight on c3 uh, even if it's uh, even if it's like the beginning of the game e4 c5 knight f3 and if black for some example goes for this a6 move uh, the the o'kelly variation of the sicilian you can even go c4 here prevent uh, the expansion here with b5 also you you will get a very nice grip on the d5 square uh, but okay, uh, here after d6, Fischer goes for c4, now really controlling that d5 square, a6, knight goes back to c3, uh, we have knight to f6 and bishop to e2. Bishop to e7 by Taimanov, uh, Bobby castles, we have castles and now as there is already a knight on c3 and you do have to develop your b1 knight, uh, knight to a3. Uh, we have b6, uh, bishop to e3 and now comes bishop to d7, uh, rook to c1. Uh, queen to b8, now uh, adding further protection to the b6 pawn and also now the d6 pawn is attacked twice. As uh, here you can see that Fischer has a knight on a3, knight on c3, uh, the pawn and bishop here are all very nicely guarding the b5 square. So there, it's not very likely that black will be able to push b5 anytime soon. And also uh, the knight, the queen, uh, c pawn, e pawn are all guarding the d5 square. So d5 will also not be a breakthrough for, for black anytime soon uh, f3 uh, we have rook to a7 uh, and now comes knight to c2 uh, rook to d8 uh, queen to e1 and now bishop to e8 now the the rook from d8 is guarding the d6 pawn and perhaps the black will be able to push d5 at some point uh, queen to f2 attacking the b6 pawn uh, rook to b7 defending the pawn also now preparing to push b5 so fisher stops at a4 uh, now the a pawn as well uh, keeps an eye on the b5 square. Uh, we have a5, uh, and then now comes knight to d4. Uh, you don't want this knight ever to come to b5. There, it will simply be too, too much of a uh, too much of a menace. Uh, so knight captures on d4. We have b bishop captures on d4, and now knight to d7. Uh, you generally don't want to play something like e5 ever uh, in a position like this, then you will never be able to push d5 and uh, white will now simply have too many options and in the hands of a strong grandmaster uh, this is most likely uh, enough to, to even win the position. Uh, so after bishop to d4, knight to d7, preparing to remaneuver the knight either to c5 or e5, uh, queen to g3, 
Uh, now Fisher is threatening uh, queen captures on g7 checkmate, bishop to f6, and now bishop captures, knight captures, and rook f to d1. Uh, we have e5. Uh, there's really not a lot of moves you can do here for black. Uh, Fisher is still keeping an eye on the b5 square and the d5 square, so no breakthroughs are possible. Uh, it's really very unlikely that you can do a useful move with any of the rooks or with the queen. The bishop doesn't really have uh, anywhere to go, so you do have to change the, uh, you know, uh, the structure of the pawns uh, to create something. Uh, so e5. We have queen to h4 by Fisher, h6, and now comes rook to d2. Rook to d2 is a very nice move by Fisher. Uh, as you can see, the bishop from e8 is attacking the a4 pawn. Fisher would uh, perhaps enjoy playing a move like knight to d5 in the future or something, uh, but you can't do it as your a4 pawn is attacked. So rook to d2, preparing bishop to d1 to protect the a4 pawn, uh, and then the knight will be able to move. Uh, but even that, uh, a moves like knight to d7 to c5 are coming, and then there will be a double attack against uh, the a4 pawn, and Fisher wants to be ready. So knight to d7. Uh, we have bishop to d to d1 now adding for further protection to the a4 pawn knight to c5 fisher is now uh, prepared for this and we have f4 uh e captures on f4 queen captures on f4 and now knight to, knight to e6 uh, attacking fisher's queen queen to g3 uh, we have queen to c7 attacking the c4 pawn and now of course knight to d5 attacking the queen and now the rook from c1 is also guarding the c4 pawn. Uh, queen to c5, uh, this comes with check, king to h1 and now comes bishop to c6. Uh, we have rook to c3 uh, and knight to g5 attacking the e4 pawn. Uh, bishop to c2 defending and now comes bishop captures on d5 and here you can capture with uh, either pawns or or you can capture with the rook if you capture with the c pawn then queen b4 attacks the b2 pawn also you can't move the c3 rook as your d3, d2 rook is hanging uh, so you don't want to allow black so much activity with the queen uh, if you capture with the other pawn rook ca uh, pawn captures then rook e8 comes and the uh, black now controls the entire e file uh, after you go rook d1, then this rook comes to e7, and again, too much activity for black. So Fisher had uh, something else in mind. Rook captures on d5, attacking the queen. Queen to c7, and now comes e5. Fisher managed to get rid of his uh, weak e4 pawn. Uh, he will trade it, and also now uh, this bishop becomes a very nice piece. Uh, d captures, queen captures, offering a trade of queens, uh, rook d to b8, now if the queens are traded on c7, uh, the rook uh, from b8 is already guarding the b6 pawn, uh, bishop to f5, and now comes queen captures on e5. Rook captures on e5 and now g6, attacking Fisher's bishop. So instead of moving the bishop uh, right away, first h4. Uh, we have knight back to h7, uh, bishop to g4, now improving the position, uh, knight back to f6, and bishop to f3. Now, the bishop will be controlling the knight from f3 beautifully, and it comes with tempo as the rook on b7 is under attack. Uh, rook to d7, and here comes rook to b5. Here, a very nice position for, for Fisher. c5 is definitely a threat. You will not be able to capture as the rook on b8 is hanging. And here, the best thing you can do is move the rook back. Move the rook back, and now the game continues. Now, c5 will not be such a big a big thing. Uh, the rooks uh, are defending each other. You, you will be able to capture here, and after rook captures here... Uh, it will be a nice position. You can simply improve the position of your king. Either rooks will be traded, or if uh, you capture the pawn here, then uh, Tamano will be able to able to capture the pawn on, on b2. Uh, but instead, after going back, uh, Tamanov played rook to d4. Uh, first, he said, "Okay, your pawns are uh, too too vulnerable here." Uh, if you push the pawn now, okay, I will not be able to capture as my rook is undefended, but I will capture here, this will come with check, uh, I will be able to capture on a4, so surely this must be good. Uh, but, uh, you know, as it often is in chess, uh, you know, things happen. Uh, so Fisher did push c5, he allowed time out of the capture on h4, rook captures on h4 with check, this is... Uh, you have to react to this, king g1, only move, uh, and now rook b4, forcing a trade here. Uh, but Fisher says, no problem, rook captures, pawn captures, rook uh, goes to c4, attacking the pawn, uh, pawn captures on c5, and here comes uh, rook captures on c5. So pretty much a forced variation, uh, where Fisher lost a pawn. So Taimanov is here, is up a pawn in this position, uh, but 
it doesn't matter. Uh, if you look at the, the position now, Fisher has a bishop on f3 uh, against a knight on f6. The bishop is much stronger than the knight. Uh, you know, not only does it counter the mo the movements uh, of the knight, uh, but also it guards the queening square, the a8 square, and Fisher has a passed a pawn. So Fisher is very very close to queening this pawn, and uh, Black will have very hard time stopping it. Uh, king to g7 was played. Now comes a5. Fisher pushes his passed pawn. Uh, it's a passed pawn, not a fast pawn. Uh, rook to e8. Uh, Tamanov would very much enjoy playing rook e1 check and rook to a1, bring his, bring his rook uh, behind uh, Fisher, Fisher's passed pawn. Fisher doesn't allow it. Rook to c1, and now comes rook to e5. Attacking Fisher, Fisher's pawn, and now if you push it, then comes rook a5. Again, you will put uh, a rook behind a passed pawn, and although you can defend it, you will no longer be able to push it as a7 is a dark square. So, after rook e5, rook to a1, now Fisher puts his rook behind a passed pawn. Rook to e7, you do have to block the pawn from a dark square. Uh, king to f2, and knight to e8 now. We have a6, uh, rook to a7, you have to block the pawn from, from a dark square. Uh, and now king e3. Now Fisher uh, is preparing to bring his king over here. If he brings his king over to b6, the game is over. Uh, knight c7, uh, we have bishop to b7, defending the pawn on a6, uh, knight goes back, uh, and now uh, a very nice move by, by Fischer, rook to a5, not allowing this knight to come to c5 to harass the bishop and the pawn. Uh, king to f6, we have king to d3, king to e7, uh, king to c4, and king to d6. Uh, and here you can choose whether you want to play something else or you want to perhaps capture the pawn. If you capture the pawn, uh, you allow this knight to d8 move to harass your bishop, and after the bishop moves, uh, here comes knight to c6 check. Uh, and the thing is, if you capture uh, with the bishop, then uh, th this will be a draw. Uh, but if you don't capture, if you play king to b5, then white will again be winning, uh, but it's not all that easy to decide uh, to go into a variation like this. Uh, for example, knight captures, king captures, king to c7, stopping king b6, but now uh, white has b4, and uh, the two pass pawns with the beautiful bishop on f3 are much stronger than the lonely rook on a7. Whatever black plays, uh, white will simply continue pushing the pawns, and after this a7 is coming, and there is nothing you can do here. Uh, and the the king, the uh, the king and bishop will prevent the three pawns to, to be traded for for the one g2 pawn, and the white will be winning here. Uh, but although this is. Uh, a winning move, uh, Fisher finds a much nicer way. Uh, he plays rook to d5 with check. Uh, we have king to d7, uh, and here Fisher simply played king to b5, and it was in this position that Mark Taimanov, uh, one of the strongest Soviet grandmasters of that time, uh, resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, well, whatever you do here, the, the same idea, knight d8, we've shown in the previous variation, doesn't work here because you simply uh, get rook to c5 check. Uh, after rook to c5 check, you can either go king b8 and uh, get rook c8 checkmate, uh, or you can decide to move the, move the king, for example, king d7, and then, uh, like we've mentioned, if you get your king over to b6, it's game over because the rook is not trapped. You would have to give up the rook, and then after eight captures, you threaten the queen, there's nothing you can do here, you would have to give up the knight, and now white is up a whole rook, uh, of course, uh, completely winning here. So yeah, after king to c7, Fischer played king b5, and uh, it was in this position that Mark Tamanov resigned. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game uh, from round 19 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. I do hope you enjoyed it, uh, and that you're enjoying the coverage of the series so far. Uh, as usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon, uh, most likely with round 20 of the 1970 Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament. Thank you all, and uh, I'll see you soon, and uh, have uh, an excellent rest of your uh, Saturday evening.